Before we go any further, let me show you what skills you have lined up for today. Firstly, we're going to look at demonstrating an understanding of the sample. We're going to evaluate how to gather our samples. We're going to look at describing and interpreting the sample board. We're going to analyze and present presentation methods, as well as create our very own sample board. Super exciting, and as you can see, a filled lesson of excitement and creativity. With that being said, here is your quote for the day. The door handle is the handshake of a building. This is so relevant to the section of finishes that you choose for your project. Project, meaning that every element that one comes into contact with on your projects has an impact. So make sure it's a good one. What are you going to need for the lesson? Very simple. You're going to need to get your trusty computer, make sure that you've got some sort of internet connection, and there's a couple of stationary items that I'm going to ask you to collect, but do not fear for now. I'll go through them in a little bit more detail as we progress through the lesson. What can you expect from today's lesson? So we're going to start off with topic one as we look at an introduction to samples. We're going to get a brilliant understanding of what the sample is. From here, we move to topic two as we look at a closer look the sample board. Moving on to topic three as we start creating our very own sample boards. Right, so what are we waiting for? Let's dive right into topic one as we start off with an introduction to our samples. As we are well aware, today's lesson is all about the much anticipated sample board. But to understand the sample board, we need to understand the concept of a sample. And that's where we begin. Topic one, the sample. Many of you, I'm sure by now, have heard of the idea of a sample, right? Or have heard someone in a store asking if they could get their hands on a sample. Like with makeup, fabric and clothing, we need to sample our design projects. But how are we supposed to know if the color, shape, size and texture of the samples are going to suit the project that we're proposing? Well, that is where your samples come into play. So then what are our samples? Can anyone tell me based on the sneak peek that I've just provided you, what do you think a sample is and how does it relate to us as interior designers? You can pop your answers into Morpheus or simply make a note for yourselves in your sketchbooks. Guys, this is quite an important question and therefore could come up in an assignment question. So do make a note for yourself. A sample refers to a smaller manageable version of a larger group. And that is exactly what our samples refer to in interior design and the architectural industry. A sample is a smaller manageable piece of a larger piece of the final finish that we're wanting to propose for our projects. Knowing that our samples are in fact a smaller, more manageable piece of a product, so that could be your granite countertop or a paint swatch, these can be carried around for the purposes of your presentation to your client. They can be used for discussion with the contractor or simply for the designer to make an informed decision about the finished selection for their products. I have recently been working on a project for a retail client and here on your screen is a selection of some of the samples that I've gathered from various suppliers in anticipation for my sample meeting with my client. 
So I'm going to show you what I've chosen for my flooring, my paint and my joinery. Remember, this is for my client meeting. So starting off with my floor finishes, as you can see, I've got a variety of samples here. I'm going with a timber texture and I'm choosing kind of warmer undertones, warmer finishes. So as you can see, these are the three that I'm presenting. They're small enough to take with me in my handbag and they are really nice and easy and they've got a beautiful variety of colors here. So those are the ones I'm going to present to my client. From here, I'm going to move on to paint finishes. I need to select paint colors that match my floor finish. As you can see, I'm selecting warmer tones and warmer paint finish samples here. These are just a couple of small swatches you can collect from your local paint supplier or handy man. From here, I'm moving on to my joinery. I've got some shelving units that I need to design and make up. And here are some of the samples that I've chosen for that. Can you see from my selection that my samples are small enough to be able to transport with ease? Imagine carrying three large floor tiles around with you wherever you go. It's just not practical. As you can see, all of my tones really work nicely together. You don't want to bring conflicting tones through to your meeting because the client is going to question your design ethic. So as you can see, everything works really nicely together. I've got a couple of variety of textures, colors and tones for the client to choose from, but they all work nicely together. That is the key. From here, we're going to take a look at a summary of the sample as we look at the key characteristics discussed previously. Firstly, we know that a sample is a smaller, manageable piece of a larger finish. For example, a large granite countertop might be cut into a square of 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters to allow us to move that sample easily to show our clients. A sample also facilitates decision making. It allows the designer to make informed decisions about what we're wanting to do, or what direction you're wanting to go with in that project. A sample also facilitates discussion. So it allows us to have a physical idea of what a finish looks like with us in any given meeting. A sample, most importantly, is a practical element allowing movement and transportation for presentation purposes. And your sample is easily accessible, both for the client as well as the designer. It's easy to go over to your supplier, ask them for a sample, pop that sample in your handbag or in a sample bag like I have, and take that with you to your meetings, to site presentations, wherever you need that sample to be, you can take that with you. Samples in simple terms are what we use as a designer to showcase the finished selection that we're proposing for our projects or the space that we're working on. For example, let's go back to my hair salon project that I've been working on for the last couple of lessons. Part of the project entails designing a new point of sale desk or reception desk for my client. So because of this, we need to advise the client on what we think best suits the finish of that desk. But, and this is really important, we cannot simply go out and select whatever finish we feel that we'd like to see in that space, as much as we might feel that this is the easiest and best option. Besides having to think about budget, client goals, space requirement and project outline, we also need to consider what we are selecting or proposing to finish that desk in. What is that space going to look like when we propose that finish? We most importantly also need the approval on this finish from that client. That is where our samples come in handy. The takeaway tip here is never do anything without a signed agreement from the client and that applies to our samples as well. We need to present everything, including our samples, to the client to get their full buy-in of our finished selection. As the designer, we need to make sure that we've specified finishes for the entire space and the entire project, and therefore provided sample selections for each finish as well. One would have a variety of various finishes and therefore a variety of samples depending on the complexity and the project brief. Here are some of the sample finishes that one could sample or select for projects if that specific project called for it. So this is quite a general list that I use and I use as a kind of a checklist per se. Starting off with my wall finishes, I always think about what wall finish am I allocating to that project. And from here, I then think about color, type and texture. Then I think about the wall decor. Am I applying anything to my walls? Anything like wallpapers, cladding, decor, anything that would be fixed to a wall and then I provide a sample for that. From here, I think about my floor finish and this is ultimately quite an important element to any project. 
What am I putting on my floor? Am I using a tile, a carpet? Am I putting timber? Am I putting a vinyl? And based on that, I would then supply my client with samples accordingly. From here, I would look at my furniture. So guys, this could actually mean physical furniture. And it could mean fabric that you're allocating to furniture or decor pieces. So you might want to go to your local fabric supplier and select fabric that you're going to custom make your furniture piece in. Alternatively, you can go onto your online store or online website and select actual images of the furniture you're putting into that store. That counts as a sample as well. You then want to look at electrical samples. Now, a lot of designers do forget about this. This is something that I focus on quite a lot. The electrical faceplate or cover plate within a space will make a difference. It will impact your design. So, for example, you might want to do a faceplate that ties in or matches in with the wall finish. Alternatively, you might want that electrical cover plate to stand out. The same goes with your light fittings. Are you putting a light fitting in that stands out? Does it contrast against the wall finish? Think about all of that and therefore those samples will also then need to, need to be supplied to the client. From here, you want to look at the tops. So this could be tops in your kitchen, tops in your bathroom, any countertop finish and therefore supply the sample accordingly. You want to also again look here at color, texture and pattern. The next sample you want to focus on is the joinery sample. Again, anything to do with joinery. It could be cupboard doors, countertops. It could be timber finishes. Sometimes you could include doors in your joinery as well. And here you want to supply a sample of the joinery finish. So are you doing a timber finish or are you adding a formica finish? And if so, what color are you adding? What texture are you adding to that joinery? And lastly, or one of the last elements on my list, your window treatments. What are you adding to the window? Are you adding a curtain? Are you adding blinds? If you're adding curtains, you want to supply fabric samples. If you're adding blinds, you want to get a little sample of the blind finish. Is it timber? Is it vinyl? Is it a plastic blind finish? It might even be a bamboo blind finish. All of these sample selections you will then bring with you to your sample meeting. Right, so now knowing what a sample is, where do we get our samples? How do we get smaller versions of these elements? From the supplier, of course, your first point of call is your supplier. So remember in lesson six of module two, we learned all about the supplier. Well, if you do remember, then you should be able to tell me exactly who the supplier is. Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box. Can you tell me who your supplier is? Remember that we're nearing to the end of this module and this could very well be a final assignment question. So do make a note. Right, so your supplier is a person or business that provides a product or service to another entity. The role of a supplier in business is to provide high quality products from a manufacturer at good prices to a distributor or retailer for resale. A supplier in a business is someone who acts as an intermediary between the manufacturer and the retailer, which would be you, ensuring that the communication is forthcoming and the stock is of good quality. But most importantly, the supplier is the person that you are going to get your samples from. So how do we get our hands on these samples? Guys, it's very simple. Call up your local supplier, walk into that tile store, that paint store, that hardware store, maybe a carpet store, and guess what? Ask the simple question. It is very simple. Ask that person standing behind the desk or dealing with that product that you're wanting to showcase if they can provide you a sample at a practical size as you are wanting to use this in your presentation. You're wanting to show your client that specific sample. Let me tell you, nine times out of 10, the supplier is going to be more than willing to assist you as you are acting as the third party for their product. You could potentially sell their product for them. They may in fact have samples cut to size already on hand. There are even some companies that have reps that'll come out to your home or your office and deliver the samples to your door. Now that is exactly what I call service, right? Make sure that you're starting to build up your relationships with your local suppliers right away as they are going to be really helpful along your interior design journey. So make those relationships good ones. I'm sure having just covered what the sample is, you're able to tell me why they can be such important elements to our projects. Think about this one. Why are your samples so important to your projects, your clients, and even you as the designer?
Your samples are important for the following reasons. Firstly, they allow us to showcase real products to the client without having to take the client with you to every single showroom. They are a realistic piece of product and therefore allow you to make an accurate design decision right on site. They're a practical element which allow and assist the client in making a decision right there and right then without any delay and therefore they save us time. Your sample allows the client to understand exactly what they're getting from that tactile sample. So your client can touch, feel, taste, smell and look at that sample knowing exactly what will be implemented into their space. And based on that, they can make a decision if they're wanting to proceed with that sample or not. And lastly, the sample can help the designer. It's a vital element that assists us in our presentational purposes to make decisions and present beautifully consolidated presentations to our clients as well as our contracting teams. Do not overcomplicate this process. Keep it simple, stupid. Rather than loading the client with 10 samples of each finish, I would suggest only selecting one or two and absolute maximum three samples of each finish, depending on the complexity of that project though. Think about it like this. If you have specified 10 finishes and you're giving 10 samples of each finish to the client to approve, your meeting could potentially go on for an entire decade. Remember, it's your job as a designer to make the client's life simple and uncomplicated as well as stress-free and you're needing to produce and pull off a project success. Therefore, keep it simple. Did you know there are some things to consider when actually selecting that sample for your project? From here, I'm going to give you a couple of things to think about when making that sample selection. Starting off with the question, what? What activity is going to be performed in that space? The type of activity that is going to take place in a space is going to impact what finish you choose for that particular space and therefore what samples you select for your client for that meeting. So think this through carefully. Make sure that you're taking everything about that space into consideration. Everything about the activities that will happen within that space. For example, your client might want you to create some sort of area where it has a lot of potential for entertainment. Therefore, you will choose finishes relevant to understanding that there's going to be a whole lot of people within that space. The next question to ask yourself is who? Who is going to be using that space? It's important to determine the who. Who's going to be in that space and who is your client? Is your client a receptionist in a reception area? Is the space a call center that you're dealing with? Are you working with a home environment where there'll be a mixture of adults and children? Is this a busy environment? Busy environments call for samples and materials that are heavy duty and hard wearing. Less busy environments are going to be easier to use more luxury grade products. Also, looking into the type of client that will be inhabiting the space, the client's lifestyle as well as their outlook. Is the client happy to spend hours making sure that the space is cared for and looked after? Or are they a laid back type of client that wants no mess and no fuss in the space? If the client is a no mess, no fuss type of client, you might want to select samples for that space that are easy to clean, long lasting and samples and products that don't date. The next question to ask yourself is how? How is the space going to be maintained and how long is your design going to be in that space for? What is the lifespan of that project? What are the client's intentions for that space? For example, in a retail space, clients often tend to refurb the design or redesign the space every two to three years to ensure that they're keeping up with the market trend. This ties into the brand and product as well as marketing principles. For a client like this, you might want to consider using obviously hard wearing products as typically a retail store would be a semi high traffic zone. But you also want to make sure that you're choosing samples or sourcing samples that are the latest trends. Provide samples on the color trends, color forecasts and make sure that you're using the latest materials and decor styles. If you're wanting more details on how to select the finishes for your space, you'll remember that we covered this in our sample sourcing lesson, lesson six of module two. Give that a refresh and together with this lesson, you will be pro at selecting and presenting samples to your clients. Now that we've been to the supplier, we've decided on the variety of samples that we want to present to the client. Let's take a look at how we go about presenting our samples. 
Samples can typically be presented in a variety of different formats, but here are two tried and tested methods that I use regularly. Firstly, you've got the sample board. Now this is a digital board or a physical board. It means that samples have been added to a board showcasing the selection for that project to your client. Our next topic is going to cover the sample board in a little bit more detail, so hold on tight. And our next method we look at is the sample tray. Now this is quite an exciting one as it's a loose lay concept, simply meaning that the samples are loosely laid on a board, they're not fixed to anything. It could indicate that the samples are laid out on a pretty surface for the client to see or on an actual tray. So you get a lot of designers that cut out or create white trays for their samples or a specific texture tray for the sample and simply lay out the samples on that tray and take that with them to their meetings. Please remember, however, that wherever and however you're presenting these samples to your client in any format, the style of presentation needs to be your own, but always needs to be neat, clean and simple as possible. Present on a nice looking background as a messy one or one that's not thought through is going to have an impact on how the client perceives your design style. So think this process through. Before we go any further, I want to give you a sneak peek into what you can expect for lesson eight, our up and coming lesson. We're gonna look at everything to do with the finishing schedule, meaning we are taking the samples that the client has approved, putting them into a document format and presenting them for construction. Yes, we're moving into construction phase. I'm going to show you everything you need to know in that lesson. But for now, we're getting back to our sample lesson as we move on to our next core topic, taking a closer look at the sample board. Remember in lesson six of module two, we learned everything about finishes and sample sourcing. Well, that's exactly what we're doing today. We're going to gather the samples relating to our project and present them to our client in the form of a sample board. But with that being said, let's take a look at exactly what the sample board is. Can anyone tell me? Have a think. What do you think a sample board is? A sample board is the part of the project or the element that is going to confirm and provide specific detail on realistic and exact proposed finishes for your project. Unlike the concept board and mood board, which usually relay the mood or feeling and the concept that needs to be achieved in the space, your sample board is a physical tactile board. You typically want to develop your sample board after you've obtained the client brief, conducted your schematic design, which means that you've done your site survey and your technical drawings of the proposed site, and you've had your client approval for the concept. From here, you're going to collect your samples and set up the sample board. The sample board is a presentational board that showcases actual samples of furniture and finishes that you're proposing for that project. The sample board is used in conjunction with your 3D models, your 2D plan, elevation and section drawings, concept board and any presentational elements that you had for your project for final completion. This needs to portray the exact color scheme, the tones, the finishes that the client can expect to see in the completed space. So this detail on this board needs to be quite exact. This board, as we have discussed and as I've mentioned, can be digital and it can be a physical board. It's totally up to the designer. Let's take a look at some of the key characteristics of your sample board. So firstly, your sample board is a form of a presentational board, which you use to present to your client. As I've mentioned, it can be digital or physical, meaning that it can be created on computer or it can be a physical board showcasing physical samples. As I've just mentioned, the sample board showcases the actual finish that is going into the space. So it's not an idea of the finish. It's not a what if or maybe this. It's an exact finish of that concrete or of that marble top that you are implementing into your client's kitchen. The sample board is an indication of the expectation. It's an exact indication of what the client can expect when they walk into that finished space. Ideally, you want to make sure that you're including as much of the project finish as you can on your sample board from that small decor element right through to the large furniture piece and light fitting within their living room. Right, so where in the project timeline do you think that you would create a sample board? Think about it. I have alluded to this. But go back, have a think, where do you think we would create our sample boards? 
Before sourcing or selecting finishes for your project and setting up your sample board, you would have typically gone through the following process. You would have definitely met with your client and obtained your client brief and completed the design brief. You want to know exactly what the client is expecting to get out of that space. You also would have needed to have gathered all the information about the project as it's going to assist you in your material selection process. And lastly, you would have conceptualized the design so we would know exactly what direction this project is going in. From here, you would begin the process of completing the design scheme. By this point, we would have provided all the conceptual information about the project as well as conveyed the mood that we're wanting to create within that space. Part of our design scheme, as we've learned in our previous lessons, is to create our design board where we add the detail of the finishes that we're proposing for that project. By this point, we would have an idea of the finishes, the color, the texture, and the shade that you're wanting to bring into your design and into that space. But we need to take this into more detail and more depth. And that's where your sample board comes in. We need to start sourcing the actual finishes from the samples for your client to approve in that space. There are a variety of tools that one could use to create and produce the sample board. So I'm going to show you some of my tried and tested tools broken down into two categories the physical sample board tools and your digital sample board tools. Let's take a sneak peek. With your digital tools, you are looking at your computer, your internet connection, and an application or template. So there are a variety of programs when I speak about an application or template that one could use for the sample board presentation. However, here are my tried and tested ones. Firstly, I like to use PowerPoint. This is a program that I'd say I use for most of these kinds of boards for the simple fact that PowerPoint is easy, quick and simple to use and it produces amazing presentations. The second application that you can look at is Photoshop. So if any of you have ever used Photoshop or seen presentations created on this program, you should be amazed. Photoshop is definitely a program that can add depth and quality to a presentation, unlike PowerPoint but sometimes can take a lot of time and energy to navigate. I would, however, suggest that if you do have some spare time and reading energy, that you use this to go and investigate this program a little bit further. The third application I want you to go and check out, it's a really nice application, which is a free version. You also get a paid version. It's called Canva. Canva has a variety of downloadable templates for you that you can generate a sample board from. This is something I suggest you give a try in your spare time. I love this app, not only because it's got preset templates, but also because it's really modern with beautiful ideas and great color scheme options for the board itself. So do be sure to give those a little look. When it comes to the manual tools, this is where the fun begins. You would typically need to get your hands on the following. So first things first, you need to get the board. What are you going to fix your samples to? The board, the actual board that you're going to put your physical samples on. It needs to be a fairly sturdy board that can support really heavy samples. Guys, let me tell you, these boards get heavy. Do not underestimate that. Ideally, you want at least about a three millimeter board or a solid cardboard or even better, a timber board. Next, you want to get your hands on an art knife. So this you can get from your local stationery supplier. It's just a little knife that you can cut your sample headings down or even very thin samples that you can cut to size. Next, and strangely enough, a computer and internet is always handy. For any images that you need to download or furniture pieces, you will go to your internet connection or computer for that. You're not going to be able to stick a physical sample of each element to the board, right? In this instance, you want to get an exact photograph of that item. And remember, it needs to be an exact photograph. Why? Because our sample boards are exact. For example, if you're presenting a couch to your client, you want to get a picture of that exact couch and stick that to your board. Next, you need some heavy duty glue and that's to paste the samples to the board. From here, you need to make sure you've actually got the samples, the physical samples. And remember, guys, they need to be neatly cut. I cannot stress this enough. You need to make sure that your samples are neat and tidy. They need to be all the same or if not a very similar size as close as possible. All the edges need to be clean, neat and not jagged. This will have an impact on the board itself. 
Next, you want to get some sort of a label maker or your printer and computer. So I would usually print all of my headings for my sample board on my computer. I would create them on a Word document or a PowerPoint document, print them off and then neatly cut them with my art knife and glue them to my sample board. A handy tip here, a nice background is always nice. So remember, if you're wanting to present to your client, you want that whole board to look nice. Therefore, the background needs to look neat, clean and lend itself to the design. You could get a nice black or white card to stick to your existing board. Or alternatively, if you are showcasing some sort of a wallpaper, you could use this as your background as well. Right, so now we have a good idea of what we can use to create the sample board, but we need to know what components make up that sample board. What is going to be on that sample board to be able to present? What do I need to add to my board, whether this be digitally or physically, to make that a complete sample board? Let's take a look. Firstly, you're going to need the actual board. You want to ensure that your board is ready. This might be digital or physical. You want to make sure that you have an idea of the template and how you're going to set up and lay those samples on your board. Please guys, do spend a bit of time thinking this through because this is a presentation, a formal presentation to your client. Next, and most importantly, we need our samples. Ensure that you've got your samples on your board neatly and creatively displayed for the client to see. From here, we are going to have headings on our board. You want to clearly label each of your samples, starting at the purpose of the sample, indicating where it's allocated to. You want to give an idea of the finish of that material or the makeup, and then you might potentially want to add where that sample comes from. And lastly, and something I always include on my board, the client approval block. This is not a must, but I always like to add it as an extra where the client can sign in approval of the samples chosen. They can also make comments on the document or on the board itself, but I always allocate a little block. On your screen is a sample board that I have created for a client very recently. Let me show you how I've broken it down, including all of my elements. So as you can see, I've got the board and the template and layout has already been set up. I've given myself a nice heading so the client knows what we're referring to, as well as a little diagram, a floor plan of the space. I like to include a floor plan so that the client knows where the samples are allocated to. As you can see, I've also got a little signing area where the client can sign. I've added some notes for the client's reference. And then most importantly, as you can see, I've got my samples. Right, so now you can also see I've broken my board up into two boards. I don't just have one, I've got two indicating two areas, the master bedroom and the lounge area. And each board is fully comprehensive with each element. Now that we've got a better understanding of our samples, the sample board and how to put a basic sample board together, I'm going to show you and go through my sample board process as I show you step by step how to create a digital sample board that you can use for almost any client. Before I go any further, I just want to let you know I prefer creating my sample boards digitally as I have them on record at all times. With that being said, I always bring some of my physical samples along with me to any presentation in my presentation meetings for my client. This gives the client a tangible object to look and feel while I'm walking them through my beautiful presentation. In this topic, I'm going to show you step by step the process that I follow from setting up my sample board to actually physically presenting it to my client. For those of you who want to see how to make up a physical board as opposed to a digital one, I've added a link for you in your summary notes, so do be sure to check that out. Before we begin, this is roughly the process that I follow. So firstly, step one, I'm going to gather my samples. Make sure that you've got your samples ready in a space so that you don't have to fuffle around looking for them. This just wastes time. Step number two, you want to make sure that you've got an idea of the template. Play around with the template before you begin. Have an idea of what kind of idea you're wanting to present to the client, how you're wanting to present it, and in the most professional manner possible. Then step three is adding the detail. So this is where I indicate and add all my headings as well as the information relating to the sample. And step four, I present the sample board to my client digitally or physically. And actually in this case, I usually do both methods. We're going to begin with step one as we gather all of our samples. First things first, I gather all of my samples, making sure that they're in one location on my computer to make setting up the sample board much easier. So guys, just a reminder, we're creating a digital sample and therefore all of our samples need to be on our computers to make it easier to add into our sample boards. 
In order to do this, you need to do a couple of things. So firstly, you're wanting to gather some photographs and physical samples. Gather and save digital images. Photograph the physical samples that you have collected. These might be your samples that you're going to take with to your meeting. Make sure that they're in a good quality image in a neutral light. Export these images from your phone or from your camera to your computer via email or a cable. And then you're going to want to save them to your desktop or in a project folder relevant to your project. In this case, I'm going to call my project Project X and I'm going to save all of these images to a sample folder in this folder. Next, you're going to want to gather all of the digital samples. Research all of the images of the product and furniture that you're wanting to use in that space. So images of samples and product that you could not photograph. I typically spend a couple of hours before I start any sample board and dedicate that to image sourcing. You want to make sure that you find each and every one of these images, furniture, lighting, rugs, decor element, paint swatches, anything that you're not able to photograph a physical sample of. If you're able to find a better image of the sample online, please use that one. I would rather use that than use a blurry, unreadable image. I then take all of these images and make sure that they're all saved to one folder on my desktop. Right, as you can see, there's my Project X, and inside that, I've got my Finishes folder and a Sample Inspiration folder. In my Inspiration folder, I've got all of the images relevant to my Inspiration picture, so what I want the space to look like. And in my Finishes folder, I have my Finishes. Step two, we are going to set up and add images to our template. Step two is simply where I, one, plan out the template, and two, add my images. This is quite an important step in my process as it's an organizational step. The more organized and neat you are with the process, and this applies to anything in interior design, the more it will have an impression on the client. So I spend some time planning where I want my images to go on the board, how I want them laid out. Just a note here, your sample board does not need to be one single board or a single page. It could be a couple of boards or pages broken down room by room or area by area or sample by sample. I usually decide this based on the scale of the project. So for example, smaller projects, I try to stick to one page and larger projects, I might use a couple of pages. I don't want a messy cluttered sample board, so do keep that in mind. So there are a variety of ways that one could set up their template. Firstly, you could choose to use a template. There are many templates online, free templates at that, that you can download and use to set up and create a sample board. The first thing that comes to mind is simply Googling the word sample board template and you'll see so many pop up, so many options come available to you. And the other option that I mentioned in our previous lesson and this one as well, you can use a program called Canva. Now Canva is amazing. It's a modern new way of creating and setting up mood boards and sample boards. They've got a variety of templates plus incredibly trendy and up-to-date concepts. So do give that a little look and see if you have some extra time. The next way of setting up your sample board or your template is by trial and error. So because I'm at the point where I can do these sample boards almost in my sleep, I prefer to create them in a trial and error manner. I enjoy working with each image and working out where they best sit in conjunction with the rest of the samples. However, if you're a newbie to this, I suggest you start off by getting a template and then from there using the trial and error method. At this point, you're going to want to add all of your images so that you're creating an artwork of sorts. Each image and position needs to make sense. So I usually think about it like this. My flooring will go at the bottom of my board. My countertops and furniture would go in the middle of the board and then any ceiling or lighting elements at the top. If you think about it in that way, that's exactly how the finishes are going to be implemented into your project. And that's how the samples should therefore be presented. Remember, this is my way and one that I think works best. You don't have to stick to this format, but I definitely give it a try if this is your first go. So this is what your sample board should look like. Let's see how we get there. This is my template sample board that I've used. You can copy this one or make your own. It's simply a border with a heading and then some notes on the one side so that we all know what the project is about. From here, I'm going to simply dump all of my images onto my sample board template. Remember, this is made in PowerPoint or my one has been made in PowerPoint. So it's really easy to just drag and drop all of my images onto the space. And then as you can see, it's looking really messy. So I'm going to move them to the outside of the board so I've got a nice blank space on the center portion of my board. 
Don't worry if this takes a little bit of time, it will, as you can see mine is. It's really a good idea to make sure that you know exactly what images you're working through or working with and spend some time organizing them to the side. Then from here, as you can see, I'm starting to pull the images that I like and put them in the order that I want them to sit on my sample board. So pulling the images that I need to showcase first, as you can see, I'm starting off with my timber floor. I'm moving that to a position on my board that I feel works nicely. Remember, I'm doing a trial and error method. You might want to use a template or you can copy my template. Then I carry on this process by moving all of the samples onto the center of the board, the samples that I'm wanting to show, making sure they're all a similar size and the same shape. As you can see, I'm cropping the samples to a very similar shape. Remember guys, this is a presentational board. It's a board that your clients are going to see. You're wanting to excite them and drag them, pull them into the project presentation and the proposed spec for the projects. So make sure that everything's neat. As you can see, I'm using a grid to make sure that my samples are lining up nicely. Neatness is key. As you can see, I'm carrying on this process until my sample board is complete and has all the relevant samples to that space on this board. Here's a handy tip. Make sure that all of the images are more or less, number one, the same size, number two, the same tone, and number three, logically presented. When I speak about the same size, it means that we don't want a combination of different sizes. You wanna keep your images more or less a similar size, which will land or lend itself to the neatness of the overall presentation. When we speak about the same tone, I mean that the samples need to work together. Otherwise, you've chosen the incorrect samples. After all, that's why we are presenting this board to the client. We're telling them that these samples are going to work in that space together. When I speak about being logically presented, make it easy for the client to understand what they're looking at. The less explaining you need to do, the better job you have done at the end of the day. Step number three, we're going to add our detail. Step number three is just as important as step number two, add the detail. I make sure that every single sample on my board has a label, so a heading and a description. You can simply do this by creating a text box on PowerPoint, which is really easy and typing out each detail for each sample. Make sure that all the sample headings line up, that they're the same font and text size and that they don't clutter the drawing. Let's see how that's done. Right, so here is my sample once I've added all of my images. And as you can see, I'm grabbing a text box and then I'm typing first what the sample refers to. So this sample is a sample of a countertop. I'm then indicating the color. So the sample is a gray color. And then that follows the type of sample. So this is an easy quartz countertop. I'm then making sure that the font I've chosen is easy and nice to read and makes the drawing look nice or the presentation look nice. And then I'm making sure that it's easy to read as I said, as you can see, I've given it a white background, which makes it much easier to read and gives the overall presentation a better look and feel. Once I'm happy with the heading template, I'm then copying that heading template across and using that for the rest of my samples. From here, I'm simply changing the text to suit the sample. And there you have it. That is our sample board. On your screen is an example of a sample board that I've recently created for a client's master bedroom. As you can see, I've got my heading, my border, I've got all of my samples which are neatly and excitingly laid out on my presentation with all of my headings. From here, we move to step four, where we present to the client. Right, so now we've created our sample board, we need to present to the client. This is my presentation process. So firstly, I set up the meeting, I then prepare all my components, so I make sure that I've got my samples, I've got my sample board, I've got copies of everything digitally, and anything that I needed to print, I have printed before my meeting. And then lastly, I go to my meeting, and I conduct the meeting. In this meeting, I've got copies of all, all of my digital documents. So I printed out my physical and my digital sample board. Then I take samples of what I'm presenting as well. I usually have a couple of bags that I take along. I'm typically known as the bag lady. I've got my sample bag and then I've got my printed bag. So I've got a bag with all my prints in it so that when I get to the meeting, I know exactly where everything is and I'm not wasting any time. I've created a set or a list of tips and tricks for you for creating and presenting your sample board. So let me show you what they are. 
Firstly, you want to always be prepared. Make sure that you've extra prepared. You've printed extra copies and you're 100% ready for that meeting. Don't overclutter your presentation. Keep it simple. Don't overclutter the presentation space. Make sure that your samples are easy to see. I always like to prepare an agenda for my meeting so I know exactly where the meeting's going and we're not wasting time. And lastly, I bring one or two physical samples with me so that the client can see exactly what they're looking at so that they can feel what the sample feels like and they know what they're expecting in the space. Well done, guys. We have reached the end of lesson seven. Let's take a look at what we've covered. So firstly, we started off by demonstrating an understanding of samples as we looked at what the sample was. Following that, we evaluated how to gather our samples as well as described and interpreted the sample board. From there, we did an analysis on the presentational methods, how to present your samples and what tools you could use. And lastly, we created our very own sample board. Well done, an amazing lesson. And as I mentioned, one of my favorites. Yes, and you knew it, we have got to our challenge. And your challenge for today is to create a sample board. You are gonna create a sample board for your friend's kitchen. I would like you to meet with your client, your friend, and obtain a brief to redesign his or her kitchen.